What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update. Been an eventful day in the Tottenham world today, as we all heard the news earlier on about Arnie Slot. He will not be coming to Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, but we do have some information to talk about with Arnie Slot and the Telegraph are reporting that Tottenham refused to pay what Feyenoord wanted for the compensation. This is why the Arnie Slot move fell through. Sammy Mockbell says something very similar, saying Arnie Slot was fully open to joining Tottenham Hotspur, but the fee to get him out of Feyenoord escalated to £15 million, uh, to, and that startled senior Spurs figures. Even after Slot's announcement that he would be staying at Feyenoord, it is understood that he was fully open to joining Spurs this summer and there remains some disappointment that he isn't joining Tottenham. Is that disappointment from his end or our end? I feel it sounds like from his end, but it makes um, absolutely no sense why you would pursue someone at Arnie's Slot. You know that um, he, you're going to have to pay Feyenoord a fee anyway to get him out of the club, and you know that they're going to offer him a big, um, they're going to offer him a big contract to try and convince him to stay. So look, there's going to have to be some outlay, and yes, 15 million. To be fair, 15 million is a fairly significant outlay when it comes to getting a manager. Um, we usually the fees are around five to 10 million. I understand that. But if he's your number one choice, you've done your due diligence on arriving at this uh, candidate as the guy that you want to spearhead the club into this next era or whatever you want to call it, the new rebuild. Then 15 million shouldn't be a, that, that much of a of a of a kind of outlay to get all those things. You shouldn't be going for your fifth or sixth choice or whatever after this. Um, considering you know Poch and Nagelsmann are not going to join, you shouldn't be going down the list and then bulking at something like 50 million if you're convinced this could be the guy to lead you forward. So for me, 15 for me that's no excuse. 15 million, I think that's an outlay that should for a club like Tottenham should easily be affordable. Well, the cl club didn't really clearly didn't do enough due diligence, did they? Because um, if they did enough of it and they actually looked into it a proper amount, they would have known the fee that they would have had to have paid or at least close to it or in the ballpark figure. And yeah, you're completely right in what you're saying. If you've earmarked this guy as your number one target and you think he can take the club forward, you bloody go and pay the money that they're asking for. And also... The you know, 15 million you have to pay for slot. If you, if we, let's say our next, our next on the list is Amorim. Let's say he's next on the list. He's also 15 million. He's more. Or more. Uh, Nagelsmann was about 10 million or something. So it's even less. So it just makes absolutely. What can 15 million get you anyway? Like in, in this market, if you're, if you're saying, oh, we need to save for transfers or something, then what can 15 million get you? It doesn't really get you much. Like, the, for what the upside is, if it goes well, getting some like an Arnie slot and bring him through the door. Like if he can, if you if you believe, look, Tottenham need a complete rejuvenation right now. We're on off, we're on our knees, we're on the floor right now. But like just pray, like needing an injection of energy and inspiration, right? That's invaluable. That kind of stuff. So if you think this guy can give it to you, fifty million um, sh should be no obstacle. No, and, obstacle. And, you know, they were talking a year ago. We were talking about this cash injection that Enoch gave us, right? And we didn't even spend that whole money that they were speaking about. So where's the rest of that money anyway? Why can they not spend enough money to go bring a top-class manager in? Just to, uh, as a point, though, I did read the article from Tommy Mockbell, and he did. It said in the article, um, Spurs sources um, say um, that the fee wasn't the obstacle, and uh, the source claims that the obstacle was that they felt um, Slot was using them to get a better contract final. That's why they pulled out. That's what he says in the uh, that's what the Spurs sources say in the article. What rubbish! Arnie Slot literally was in was in an interview the other day or the other week talking about how uh, he'd love to manage in the Premier League, and you know if he if he's still at final in the next two years, then um, it doesn't look like he's moving forward in his career. So I mean that makes no sense whatsoever. It's just rubbish put out in the club by the club to uh, to try and bring fans on side safe face i guess and that's it that's exactly what it is i'm not buying any of this rubbish that enoch put out there anymore it's absolute crap yeah they're, they're, they're terrible at it as well they're terrible at and they're getting worse yeah they're getting they don't know how to put a message across to the fans they don't know um anything to make them look good their pr is absolutely horrific Let's move on and let's talk about some potential candidates now. Lewis Enrique, Simon Stone of the BBC saying, well-placed sources have suggested that Tottenham retain an interest in former Spain and Barcelona coach Lewis Enrique, who is without a job since standing down after the World Cup. 
well, he's not going to take a compensation fee, so uh, what's the excuse going to be this time? He's demanding too much money for the transfer <laughs> kitty, 100%. You, I think the thing is, from like the, the, see, the difference, why in the end, even though you're paying £15 million for slot right, I think he'd be a cheaper option in the in the great Agree, 100%. Than Enrique. 100%. Enrique probably charges a higher fee for his wages, and I think slot would be slot would be more willing to try a youngster or work within the means of the club whereas Enrique is going to be like look I want 150 million I want 200 million I want this player I want that player he's going to have high demand and he's going to end up costing you more if you go for someone like Enrique so yeah short term wise you might be saving a few a bit of money on the compensation but long term and someone like Enrique is always going to be um, more highly demanding so it doesn't make any sense to me look I, again we've spoken about it before I rate him as a manager I just don't think he's right for a rebuild at Tottenham where uh, where we are, where we're at at the moment. Look, they're burning their bridges, whichever way you want to look at it, whichever way they turn, they're burning their bridges. They bring in Jose Mourinho and uh, Antonio Conte to try short-term fixes, but they don't want to um, do the cry work to bring in the short-term fix and actually follow through on those short-term fixes. They've earmarked Arnie Slot, who is, in my opinion, I actually think Arnie Slot is the perfect fit for Tottenham in everything that he wants to do, in everything Enoch want to do. Um, he literally ticks all the boxes, Arnie Slot, for... Um, for the rebuild at Tottenham. So if, the, if they're not going to spend the money to get him in, they've burnt that bridge. Luis Enrique is just going to be another Antonio Conte and another Jose Mourinho who will be out the door in 18 months' time. That's just the facts of the matter. So unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work. And if they do bring him in, it's going to be a sad story all over again. Next up, let's talk about Ange Postacoglu. Miguel Delaney saying that Tottenham now strongly considering Postacoglu, who is now seen as one of the main candidates. Gary Jacobs says that Tottenham had an interest in Ange Postacoglu, but were worried about him being 57 years of age. Yeah, nice young up-and-coming manager. <laughs> look, that's a bit unfair, to be fair, because look, he is he's new to like European football, I guess, because he's only been at Celtic for a short amount of time. He's worked um, mainly in like, Australia, was Australian national coach as well for all for a bit so, and clearly he's loved wherever he goes but why is why is he 57 and he hasn't really got a big move yet I'm, I can't really answer that um, apparently he does play look he does no not apparently he does play really good football and maybe he could be a, a man who, who Spurs could turn to but in terms of appointing an uh, innovative young hungry up and coming manager like at 57 I understand he doesn't quite fit that criteria yeah I mean probably at that age he probably is the only one that, that could fit that criteria to be honest but look I like Postacoglu and the and the the work he's doing at Celtic but like doing a job at Tottenham and in the Premier League is a completely different kettle of fish and Look, let's be honest. Yeah, how many how many average managers can go to Celtic and go and win a league at, um, in the Scottish league? Look at Steven Gerrard, for example. Mm. He absolutely smashed out the Scottish league with Rangers. He brought Rangers back uh, from the abyss, and um, look at him now. You know, mm. so plenty, plenty, plenty of managers will go into the Scottish league uh, that are not good enough for top leagues in Europe and do well. And yeah, you can probably make the same argument in the Dutch league for Arnie Slot and. Um, as well but I think Arnie Slot is a completely different kettle of fish I think that he is actually a perfect fit and um, more of the similar ilk of like Ten Hag but I think he could even be even better than Ten Hag potentially but back on Postacoglu I think it's just be a, an underwhelming appointment if we appoint him why is he 57 and he's only now coming to Europe well, there must be a reason for that I don't know I haven't looked into him uh, too much but I have watched a lot of his uh, Celtic team this year and they are impressive but his scouting network and the players that he's brought in, like these players are not going to be good enough for the Premier League. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure the Cel his Celtic team like got the least points ever in the group stage or something, or so something to that effect. What, in they, the Champions League? In the Champions League, they did like historically badly or something. They did something. do very badly, So yeah. clearly wasn't that true. I know they had a hard group, but still they had Shakhtar and stuff and they couldn't even beat them. So like, it, was, it wasn't that transferable. Yeah, I mean, Shakhtar aren't the worst team in the world, but and they, again, they, they lost all their players. Again, you compare that to um, to Arnie Slot. He went, got to the semi final of the Europa League, and that's just case the in point, isn't final it? Final the Conference League in the quarters of the Europa League. Well, there, there you go. Mm. Um, anyway, let's move on to the last manager that we're going to talk about today in terms of who is linked to Spurs, and that is Vincenzo Italiano of Fiorentina. And Damasio is saying that he is on Tottenham's list, and I don't really get this one. Like. 11th in the Serie A yeah conference league final but do you really have to be a great manager to get to the conference league final I'm not so sure um, doesn't excite me whatsoever I saw a tweet from an Italian uh, football fan saying that 
um, people turn their noses up at Italiano, but he does play an aggressive, high-pressing 4-3-3 system, and he and, and he brought Fiorentina from the brink of relegation last season to a Conference League final this season. So, look, it's not all bad, but at the end of the day, they are 11th at the moment in Serie A, so clearly on a consistency basis, he hasn't been able to keep up those standards to battle for a European space via the league, um, albeit the, you know fairly decent competition this season in Serie A with a few teams getting, to, getting quite far in Europe, we've seen. Um, they have got to a Conference League final, which is fairly impressive for Fiorentina. But I don't like I, like at the end of the day, we're going to need someone who can build consistent performances, and I don't know if he's shown that just based off um, a good cup run, like eleventh in the league. Are we really going to hire a manager who finished eleventh in the league with Fiorentina? Fiorentina are a good t- like good club. I don't know about Decent. maybe um, maybe they've fallen off recently because I know they've always been re- European regulars. They were doing all right when they had Vlahovic, didn't weren't they? Yeah, Vla- yeah Vlahovic was uh, last season, wasn't it? So. I don't know. Um, I don't know why um, they they were in a relegation battle last season. But eleventh is not where Fiorentina want to be. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said before, like one run to the Conference League final is not going to make me uh, say like this guy is the right guy for us. I mean, I can't remember who said it in the WhatsApp group. We may as well go get David Moyes then. Get him in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's getting the final of a Conference League. He got to the semi final of uh, Europa League last year. So is that the metric that we're going on? Mm, true. Um, let's talk about these Jose Mourinho quotes now. Um, he was talking in a press conference um, and he says, the only club I've coached in my career that I don't have a great feeling for is Tottenham. I hope that I will not be misunderstood by the Tottenham fans, but is the only club that I don't have a close relationship with. Perhaps because during the period I was coaching, um, the club, the stadium was empty during COVID and uh, the president Levy did not give me much. I will fill uh, that love with Roma, but not for the Mr. Levy club. Yeah, and it, to me, it makes sense because he loves, like Mourinho, his whole thing is the final, playing finals. That's like his Oh, whole... he also mentioned that, by the way. He also said it also maybe it's because Mr. Levy didn't let me play the final. Yeah, that was the quote, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't read that out though. Um, so look, I, it makes sense because he he lives for finals and the fact that we robbed him of even pl- of uh, of kind of playing in that final managing in that final having the chance himself to win it or lose it must have really been hard to take because he has that record that that has gone with him wherever he's gone where he's won a trophy it doesn't matter what it is he's won something with every club he's been at and we robbed him of that chance to do it at Tottenham so obviously he's going to feel a bit bitter, bitter about that and you know it goes back to that quote when from what Levy said in in a, a statement after um was it recently in the program notes after the uh, before the Brentford game? He said every decision I, we've made is for the better of the club or the ambition of the club. And it's like, was sacking Reno six days before a final was was that a decision for the benefit and the ambition of the club? Like I don't believe that. For that a was second. that dis- that decision to sack Mourinho was to line the pockets of the club because they thought they had an outside chance of getting Champions League football. Mm. That's the reason that they did it. It's not for the sporting merit of the club whatsoever. And I'm still bitter about it. Many Spurs fans should be still bitter about it. You don't hire Jose Mourinho for a quick fix and then sack him five days before a cup final. It's an absolute joke. And whatever fans want to say about yeah, I, I know the fans have really took to him while he was at Tottenham, and I understand that. And the football we played under him at times was pretty stodgy, to, to, to say the least. And I understand that. But it is sad that he can have this... He, you know, he can go back to any of his former clubs and he can be welcomed back as a, as a legend or, or maybe not Man United but all the other clubs he did an unbelievable job won them trophies um, w- was there for for a, for a couple years at least and did brilliant jobs at all his clubs and then he and then at Tottenham it's not the same and we can we can say oh whatever he, his football's terrible and uh, he's just a dinosaur all we want but at the end of the day we're the only club that he never won anything for and we're the only club that he didn't have a good experience with look that's at the it. work that's, he's that's doing truth. at Rome just look at the work he's doing at Rome now he won the Conference League last year he's probably going to win the Europa League this year um, and even back to that Man United job yeah like the, the work that Ten Hag has done this season, I mean, I would still say Jose has done a, did a better job at Man United mm. with what he did. He mm-hmm. finished second, didn't he? He won the mm. Europa League, didn't he? And he won the League Cup. Yeah, fine. Ten Hag won the League Cup as well, and he's going to probably finish third or second, but still comparable. Definitely won trophies again. Mm. And yeah, I think we, we kind of, we turned against him maybe too much as a fan base potentially, but at the end of the day, we sacked him six days for a cup final. It's just a ridiculous decision. Yeah, at the time, um, a lot of the Spurs fans, in my opinion, shouldn't have been celebrating Mourinho getting sacked. Mm-hmm. They should have been 
pointing criticisms at the board at the time because like i said you don't bring in you don't go on this whole quick fix thing and you when you have jose Mourinho, hire jose Mourinho because we're so desperate to win a trophy and then sack him four or five days before the final. And you give him Roden and Carlos Vinicius and Matt Doherty. Yeah, that, that's a complete separate you know point. I mean? And we yeah. can go on forever about that. <laughs> but I'm just talking simply about a quick fix, desperate for a trophy, <laughs> sacking him four or five days yeah, before you, a cup final. You, hired, you literally hired him to win a trophy. That's, yeah. just, that's what we what hired him did. for. Yeah, and we sacked him before he had his first chance to do it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And moving on, let's talk about Harry Kane now. Reports out of Spain, first up from Carousel, a p Spanish publication saying that Harry Kane has asked Tottenham Hotspur to let him leave if a good offer arrives and the club are open to selling him abroad. He has been offered to Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Manchester United and PSG are also interested. A Spanish journalist Pacojo saying that Real Madrid is analysing the Harry Kane as a potential transfer option. They have been offered the chance to sign the player and are thinking about whether to make a move. Yeah, um, and it makes sense because looking at the shit show that's going on at the moment with the managerial search, right now is when we should be literally trying, trying our best to prove to Harry Kane that there is a future still for him here. We can um, progress. We can move forward as a club. And we're not showing that at the moment. We've shown the opposite, in fact, that we're probably going to go backwards, if anything, right now. There's no there's no kind of planning. We don't seem to have a plan right now. And that's exactly what we, got, we should be showing to Harry Kane. I can't see him going abroad still. Um, but I do think he's going to be, have a big push to leave the club this summer. Whether it happens or not, we'll have to, we'll have to see. But I, I'm not surprised that his mind is definitely like, I need to get out of here because that's exactly where we are at the moment. Yeah, it's absolutely right. And if I was Harry Kane, I'd be doing everything I can uh, to get out of this football club at the moment. We are a club in absolute crisis. Um, the club don't deserve to have a player like Harry Kane at the moment with the way the efforts that they're putting in to move the club forward. Um, but again, I just like you said, I just can't see him moving abroad. I think, just really can't. Do you think it's, there's a possibility maybe he like, let's say uh, the chance to go to Madrid comes up. Let's say we were just re flat out refusing to sell to to a English club. And let's say the move to Madrid comes up and uh, and he, they give him a three-year deal, right? Is there any possibility he goes there for like two years and then maybe comes back to England and goes for like Man United or something? I think... Um, still, I reckon he can still go to like 35 at least. I really yeah, do. I get that, but I th I don't know. I think maybe if it, it if it gets so bad that he doesn't think he's gonna he's gonna be allowed to move to like an English club or something. But there's a case to just say like just hang hang around at Tottenham for one more year, then you're gonna have your pick of whoever mm -hmm. you want to go to. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I th I think that he still obviously loves the club. He still uh, respects the fans and loves the fans. So maybe he'll just give that one more year and then just have his pick of wherever he wants to go. And to be fair, it's still it's not hurting his chances of winning that record, is he? He's just got 28 goals, exactly. and he can just think of it as like a. A one, a, a one mission just to get as many goals as he can for that Premier League record and then move on maybe it could still like maybe that's the best course of action for him yeah I think that's probably the way it's going to play out to be honest uh, but let's talk about Eric Dyer now uh, Spurs official brought us news last night that Eric Dyer has undergone groin surgery and will miss the last match at Leeds this weekend Ali Gold uh, just confirmed that saying that he had undergone groin surgery this week he's been trying to play with the problem for months since the World Cup but it's now got two too bad to play through and he's expected to be fit for the start of pre-season in July. Charlie Eccleshare saying that Eric Dyer is understood to have been managing the groin issue since the World Cup and Dan Kilpatrick saying that Eric Dyer's future at Tottenham is uncertain with one year left in its contract and the club are currently not in talks over a renewal. That makes sense. Um, well, and also it makes sense he's been man managing a groin injury given his performances. So maybe... Trust me, those performances didn't start <laughs> at the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, no, before the World Cup as well, he wasn't doing too great. Although there was was definitely a big decline I thought in the second half of the season to be for sure um, I thought he looked a lot worse albeit first half of the season he still wasn't looking great um, is it are we at risk of maybe giving him the trippier treatment not judging his performances on no the injury no chance in hell don't give me that with Eric <laughs> Dyer. come on this is year in year out yes there was a good period under Jose Mourinho but he's been bad way more than he's been good trippier on the other hand was actually good way more than he'd been bad 
Mm, that's fair. That's a fair point. Um, and also knowing the what we need moving forward from our centre backs, I just don't think Eric Dyer fits that at all. Um, he's just way too slow to play the way that we want to play. I just think as well he needs to prove. That <laughs> how do we want to play, by the way? Huh? How do we want to yeah, play? Well, I mean, how Spurs fans <laughs> want to play? Maybe not. Spurs don't know how they want to play, but I think Spurs like just you know high pressing, high line with a bit of risk. I just don't think Dyer's up to that right now. Being able to defend lots of space in behind. Um, and yeah, I think yeah, if, if before we even enter contract talks, he has to prove that he's worth a contract, and he hasn't proven that. Yeah. And last but not least, I don't know why we're going to talk about this, but we're going to talk about it anyway. It goes by the name of Edmund Tapsopa of Bayer Leverkusen and uh, Romano is reporting that Tottenham and Arsenal have had scouts monitor Edmund Tapsopa over recent matches, but the race is wide open. Bayer Leverkusen want a huge fee for the defender, so that means he's not coming to Spurs. Yeah, I don't think so. If they want a huge fee. I actually am a big fan of Tapsopa. I think he's done really well at Leverkusen. I also think he's like a, 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 a strong, um, fast defender as well can cover a lot of space I think he's done really well um, this season for them um, good age as well but obviously it depends on the new manager and, and, and everything's revolving that which we're no closer to knowing um, I think we can scout them all we like but if we're going to bring in a new sporting director or a new head of recruitment then it doesn't make much sense right now to be uh, doing all that and um, even uh, looking at players or going for players right now so um, I like him and I'd be happy if Spurs got him but it depends what the new manager wants and how he wants to play yeah exactly so I mean it's just it's worthless speaking about uh, potential player transfers when like the house is so out of order mm -hmm. like it pretty much doesn't work anymore so the house is on fire and we're talking about uh, like living room painting basically. exactly <laughs> exactly so um, we need to get our house in order before we actually talk about these kind of things sporting director manager and then we can maybe talk about pl potential player transfers but that is your Tottenham update for today let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news stories we brought to you today like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you Spurs, Spurs.